Hi, I'm Emily. Before I continue, please like and subscribe for more stories. Today I'm sharing something deeply personal. Let's dive in. The scent of lilies still hung heavy in the air, a somber reminder of the funeral we'd just left behind. The black attire didn't just signify the loss of my mother, but it felt like the beginning of the end of the home I had known all my life. As I walked through the rooms where her laughter once echoed, the walls whispered memories, each one a sharp jab to my heart. My brother Michael and his wife Heather were in the living room, quietly discussing what seemed like important matters, their voices a low murmur against the backdrop of my silent reverie. I had always felt a closeness with my mother that was as comforting as it was profound, a stark contrast to the relationship I had with Heather. Where mom had been warmth, Heather was a cold shoulder in the family, her eyes often reflecting a disdain she never bothered to voice until today. I think it's best if we clear things up, Emily. Heather's voice sliced through the silence, devoid of any warmth. As I turned towards them, Heather stood up, her posture rigid, the fake condolence of the funeral gone. Michael and I have been talking, and well, it's our house now. You don't belong here anymore. Michael's eyes met mine, not with the solidarity of a brother, but with a hollow resignation. It's for the best, Em. Heather and I need to plan our future. The words hit me harder than grief. This house, every picture on the wall, every carved piece of wood held a piece of my childhood, of mom. To be cast out from the last piece of her felt like losing her all over again. You can't be serious, I managed to whisper, my voice trembling with a cocktail of disbelief and rising despair. It's decided, Emily, you should start packing your things, Heather insisted, her tone dismissive as if she was talking about clearing away old furniture, not banishing family. But where am I supposed to go? The plea was weak, broken, because in that moment I was too. Michael wouldn't meet my gaze. You're young, you'll figure something out. We believe it's time you stand on your own. The rest of the day was a blur of tears and packing. Each item I touched was a memory, a moment in time that was being stripped away. With every drawer emptied, every photo taken down, the house grew colder, more alien. By evening, I stood at the doorway, a suitcase in one hand and a box of what was left of my life in the other. I looked back at what was once a home, now just a house filled with strangers. Remember, Emily, sometimes it's the people with no one around them that do things they never thought possible. My mother's words echoed in my mind as I stepped into the unknown. As I walked away, the resolve hardened within me. This wasn't just an eviction from a house. It was a betrayal that severed family ties. But I wasn't just going to survive. I was going to thrive, prove that their dismissal was their loss, not mine. And one day, they'd see just how much I could accomplish on my own. Three weeks had passed since the day I was forced to leave my childhood home. The city's chill seemed harsher as I shuffled through its bustling streets clutching the last of my savings and wondering where I would sleep each night. The nights were the hardest, each one a stark reminder of the warmth and security I once took for granted. At work, my new role at a small marketing firm was the only thing that kept me grounded. It was there I met Lisa, a graphic designer with a smile that lit up the room and a kindness that seemed almost out of place in the cutthroat environment we navigated daily. Hey, Emily. How about grabbing some coffee during break? Lisa's invitation came at a moment when the isolation felt almost overwhelming. As we sat in the quaint little cafe just a block from our office, the steam from the hot coffee seemed to thaw some of the coldness I had felt since the eviction. You know, if you need a place, my apartment's got a spare room. I mean, it's not huge, but it's cozy and... Well, you wouldn't have to worry about rent for a while, Lisa offered, her eyes sincere. The relief was palpable. Really? Lisa, I... Thank you. I can't tell you what this means to me. It's no trouble, Emily. Friends look out for each other, right? Her smile was reassuring, and for the first time in weeks, I felt a glimmer of hope. Moving in with Lisa brought an unexpected comfort, and as we shared evenings filled with long talks and shared meals, I found not just a roommate, but a true friend. 
One evening, as we were sorting through some of my boxes that had been hastily packed, we stumbled upon a stack of my mother's old documents and letters. Emily, what's all this? Lisa inquired, pulling out a faded document with legal jargon scribbled all over it. Oh, these are just some of my mom's things. She used to handle all sorts of legal stuff for the house. Wait. I paused, a sudden realization dawning on me. The property transfer documents weren't supposed to be processed until much later. My mother had told me once, but with everything that happened... Lisa, do you think... Could there be something off about how Michael and Heather claimed the house? Her brow furrowed as she scanned the document. It looks like your mom intended for something different. Maybe you should look into this, Emily. There could be more to the story. The seed of suspicion was planted, and over the next few weeks I began digging deeper. Conversations with old family friends, calls to my mother's former lawyer, and nights spent poring over property laws painted a disturbing picture. I think Michael and Heather might have manipulated the property transfer after Mom passed. This document here doesn't match the story Heather shoved down my throat, I explained to Lisa one evening, my voice a mix of anger and determination. So what's the plan? Lisa asked, her tone serious. We expose them. I owe it to my mom to set things right. And if they did this to me, who's to say they won't do worse to others? The next few weeks were a whirlwind of activity. With Lisa's encouragement, I dug deeper into the property documents my mother had left behind, uncovering more inconsistencies that hinted at outright fraud. It was clear now. Michael and Heather had manipulated the situation to seize the house under dubious circumstances. Lisa connected me with a legal advisor, Mr. Thompson, who had a reputation for being thorough and unyielding. Emily, based on these discrepancies, it looks like you might have a case here. We need concrete proof, though, to expose them effectively, Mr. Thompson advised during our first meeting at his office, the walls lined with law books and certificates. Armed with his advice, I devised a plan to confront Michael and Heather directly. The idea was to propose a family reconciliation meeting. It was a perfect guise to gather more evidence and possibly get them to slip up and reveal more about their fraudulent activities. The day of the meeting, my nerves were taut, but I was ready. Lisa had helped me prep, playing the devil's advocate, questioning me as Heather or Michael might. I rehearsed my responses, ensuring they were neither too aggressive nor too lenient. You're doing the right thing, Emily. Just stay calm and focused, Lisa reassured me as we drove to the cafe where the meeting was set. Sitting across from Michael and Heather, I kept my cool. The cafe buzzed around us, oblivious to the undercurrents at our small table. I thought a lot about what happened, and I think it's time we put all this behind us. For mom's sake, if not ours, I started, watching their reactions closely. Michael seemed uneasy, shifting in his seat, while Heather maintained a facade of indifference. We're glad you see it that way, Emily. It was always for the best. Heather responded, her voice smooth, too smooth. I nudged the conversation towards the house, feigning ignorance. I was going through Mom's papers, just trying to feel close to her again. I stumbled upon the property documents. Funny, I don't quite understand them. Maybe you can explain how the transfer worked exactly? Michael glanced at Heather, a flicker of panic in his eyes before regaining his composure. It's all standard legal stuff, Emily. We simply expedited the process given your... instability at the time? Is that so? Because from these documents it looks different, I said, pulling out a copy of the discrepancies I'd found. Heather's mask finally cracked, her composure slipping. What are you trying to imply, Emily? Nothing at all, just seeking clarity from my loving family, I replied, my tone even but my heart pounding. I left the meeting with more than I had hoped for. Their reactions, the subtle confessions, and even some rushed explanations that didn't add up. It was all recorded, thanks to the tiny voice recorder Lisa had insisted I use. Driving back, a surge of empowerment washed over me. With the evidence gathered and Mr. Thompson's legal expertise, I was no longer the victim of their deceit but the architect of their undoing. I'm going to expose them, Lisa. Not just for me, but for anyone else they might try to trample on. 
It's time they learned that their actions have consequences, I declared, a plan forming in my mind, one that would bring everything into the light. The journey to justice was just beginning, and I was ready to see it through to the end. The day of reckoning arrived under the guise of the annual community block party, a sunny afternoon filled with laughter, music, and unsuspecting revelations. The community center was bustling, decked with banners and tables laden with local delicacies. It was here, amidst the unsuspecting crowd, that I chose to expose Michael and Heather. With Mr. Thompson's guidance, I had prepared a small presentation under the premise of honoring local heritage, a clever cover to bring everyone together, including local press. As people gathered, murmuring with anticipation, I stepped up to the microphone, my hands steady, my resolve firmer than ever. Thank you all for coming, I began, my voice echoing over the speakers. Today, while we celebrate our community, I also want to shed light on something deeply personal yet imperative. The crowd listened, attentive, as I shifted the presentation to the screen behind me, displaying documents, emails, and recorded conversations, all pointing to Michael and Heather's fraudulent actions. The evidence was irrefutable, their deceit laid bare for all to see. Gasps and murmurs rippled through the crowd as the reality of Michael and Heather's misdeeds sunk in. Michael stood frozen, his face ashen, while Heather's facade crumbled, her eyes darting about, seeking an ally where there were none. As hard as this is, I believe transparency is crucial. We must hold each other accountable, not just for our successes but also our failures, I continued, my voice firm, broadcasting not just my story but a call for integrity. The aftermath was immediate and intense. The community's support was overwhelming, their outrage against Michael and Heather palpable. They were ostracized, their social standing disintegrating before their eyes. In the weeks that followed, their financial empire began to crumble. Creditors, once blind, pulled back, their investments and support withdrawn. Legal actions spurred by the evidence I had gathered began to take shape, ensuring that their downfall was not just social, but also financial. Throughout this tumult, the community rallied behind me. Their support helped restore my mother's house to me, not just as a building, but as a rightful home filled with love and memories. I moved back, each step through the familiar rooms a step toward reclaiming my life, each memory a brick in the foundation of my new beginning. As I settled back into the rhythm of a life once stolen, I found moments of profound reflection. The journey had been harrowing, a test of will and courage, but standing here amidst the restored sanctity of my home, I realized I had found more than justice. I had discovered my strength and independence. Mom, we did it, I whispered one evening, a gentle breeze playing through the open window, the curtains fluttering like soft echoes of the past. Your strength lives on. In the quiet of my reclaimed space, I understood that this wasn't just a victory over Michael and Heather. It was a reclaiming of my identity, a testament to resilience. They, on the other hand, faced the consequences of their actions, a fitting end far from the courts but devastatingly apartment. Now that our story has reached its conclusion, I want to pose a thought-provoking question to you all. Do you think people like Heather and Michael deserve a second chance after committing acts of betrayal? Or is complete social and financial ostracization a fair consequence for their actions? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this story compelling, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more narratives like this. Your support helps us bring more such stories to light.